Right, here we've got an F10 BMW, it's a 530 flavour, uh, it's years 2011, we're going to change the front brake pads on it, so tools so far, we, what we need is 17mm socket or uh, wheel brace for the wheel nuts, taking all them off and the key for the locking wheel nut, just about to take the key off, so just about to take the uh, wheel off and then we'll have a look at the brakes inside. Right, we're now taking the wheel off and we're going to inspect the discs. A little bit of a lip on there, but quite smooth, so I'm quite pleased with that. We'll get away with uh, not replacing discs. So if you can see in there, brake pads are quite worn. So the light come on the dash and uh, it's time to change. I'll show you the pads that I've got. Right, the front brake pads I got <clears throat> were TRW never heard of these makes but then a lot of new makes are coming out now uh, apparently they're OE spec so hopefully the right ones they were I think 48 pounds plus that and for the rear I got uh, blueprint not to be confused with blue point which is like Canadian snap on but allegedly they're uh, supposed to be quite good brake pad so I'm going to take these uh, pads off and see what condition they're in well I know they're going to be in bad condition uh, and see if they fit All right if I can show you this at the back you can see there's two grommets plastic grommets one there and one down at the bottom there so you see the shadow and I believe there to be an anarchy or a Torx screw in there. These are two grommets in question. You just pick them off a screwdriver you now. And it should be a say of a Torx or an Allen key in there, which I'm gonna have a look in a minute. Right, I'll take one of the pins out now. It was in fact a hexagonal Allen key and the size was 7mm. So that's come out, I'll clean it up in a minute with a bit of uh, sandpaper or wire wool and before I put it back I'll put a bit of copper grease on there. Right, after taking the two sliding bolts out the back, Allen keys, put a pry bar in between the disc and the pad and I prized the piston back into the caliper and you put a little bit of pressure on there try not to damage the disc and I think what you've got to do then is you can slide this whole thing over if you can see there I think this caliper needs to come over then it will come out yeah so when you push that back that will enable that caliper then to push past this bit then and then that whole caliper then will come forward and one of them obviously put a plug in that's left in the piston <coughs> and the other one then is left on there well they were worn down so they need to change in hence the light coming on and nice that they've worn evenly as well so that's a good sign to show that the uh, caliper's not binding but as I say with them sliding pins you can see the holes there and there where they slide on I'll make sure they're cleaned up and greased so they carry on wearing evenly so basically when the piston pushes the inner brake pad which you think it'd wear first what it does then it slides the whole caliper across so it evens out the pressure and it puts same on the uh, other side of the sh uh, pad as well see these pads are the same or right pads so they look identical and you can see there's not much left on there I'll put them together so certainly there'll be money's worth out of them so you can see the uh, outlet there for the uh, sensor which must be on the passenger side probably German it's the driver side but it's not on this side anyway so I can't see any wires going to it and try not to uh, hang the caliper as well because they're quite meaty 
on the brake pipe because uh, it's quite thin metal and it probably will snap it or could bend it so always best to hang the calipers up rather than leave them hanging on the hose so yeah that's ready to go in I cleaned that down a bit with brake clean and well, I brushed out dug it out with a screwdriver and that pad there should slot straight in which it does and what I'll do then is get a bit of copper grease or high temperature grease and paint the back of it some people don't bother now and they come with anti squirrel pads on there but old habits die hard so you just make sure you don't get it on the surface and say so there's a little bit of grease in there so that just helps it slide so it don't seize up and that one there I will take out and I'll put a bit of copper grease on the back of the other one and then slot it back in the caliper I'll maybe get a pair of water pump pliers or a G-clamp and squash that piston right in so it fits on nicely right there's the slider pin cleaned up just with wire brushing it took a couple of seconds uh, what I do is just give that a quick smear with copper grease and then that will be inserted back into the uh, caliper from behind and then not forgetting to put the plugs back in afterwards it doesn't have to be too tight it's quite surprising actually how easily work come undone so don't you don't need to over tighten them and there's got no lock tighten either but as I say I think you'll know if they're going to come loose it'll be uh, clunked a bit under the pedal and you've got the caps in there stopping coming fully out but yeah just nip them up I don't know what the correct torque settings are but they weren't very tight and there we have it two brake pads old ones worn to the max and the caliper reassembled so that clip's quite hard to get off or get, well not off it's easy to get off it's quite hard to get on you just get it off you just put a bar behind it just flick it out and it just comes out but it's just a real crazy design to get back in I got the bottom one in first and then hooked that little tab inside this little square insert there and then I just manoeuvred that in with a like screwdriver pushing that side and a pry bar pushing that side you probably could do it with a pair of pliers grip that and twist it as you push it and it just pops in and just tap it in and I just put a bit of copper grease on there just in case that squeals so it's got like a rubbing surface and always put a little bit of copper grease anti-seize grease on that hub bit just so that the wheels don't get stuck on there stuff it worse and having to change the wheel and it's on a crappy jack and you're trying to kick the back of the wheel off with your leg underneath it right that's it so I've got to put the wheel back on and then repeat the other side so that's how you do an F10 530 diesel 2011 front brake pads right just on a side note uh, when you're putting the caps back in around the back probably won't be able to see them but you've got the sliding pins on the back for the caliper uh, that cleaned up and you've got the plastic caps when you put the screws back in like sliding bolts with the 7mm allen key you'll notice they're quite tricky to get back in you have to wiggle the caliper around a little bit which is quite awkward try and get a thin screwdriver in there if you can and you can locate the hole and you just know where to push it in just to prise it in a little bit but what you'll find is the allen key or the allen bolts will stick out a lot more than they did when you took them off obviously with the thickness of the pad and the calipers moved over so don't be surprised that the allen key is almost flush with the top of the like rubber tube and when you put the cap over the two caps over it the caps will literally almost be touching the top of the inside of it so don't be alarmed they're not done up tighter or there's something wrong and they say the caliper will wobble about a bit as well until you get pressure on the uh, pads and don't forget as I say once you do your brakes always pump the pedal first before you go driving off because it will go to the floor a couple of times so yeah just pump the pedal up a little bit then the caliper will go hard it will like move and allocate itself take the play out of it and as I say just be mindful that the uh, caps it seems like the bolts aren't in far enough so they are as long as they're tight and uh, the caps will just slide over the top of it and it will nearly be touching the inside the cap so that's it so all I've got to do now is uh, I cleaned up the I presume their ABS sensors or traction control sensors so clean them up with a bit of uh, brake cleaner and a bit of tissue and all the discs are clean 
and it's all lubed up with uh, copper grease and that in there you can see on that as well so we've already put the wheel on so that's done and I'll take you aside in a minute and I'll show you how to reset the computer and I'll do the back ones later and I'll do that in a further video right, I'm going to try and reset the uh, computer now which when you turn it on it comes up with uh, brake light check so you've brake pads there so I'm going to try and do it as I show it on other YouTube channels so you press and hold the reset button in don't know how many seconds but you'll see it now in real time if it's going to work yeah so that's come up so reset possible brake fluid change the re uh, brake fluid reservoir so perform reset yes so if we hold and press that in reset in progress that's working now see the bars going up from left to right reset successful now hopefully we can engine oil reset possible reset brake pads minus 700 miles reset possible so let's press that then perform reset yes so release it and then press it in again reset in progress that's rear brake pads I haven't done them yet but I'm going to do them so I might as well reset in now oh that's clever it knows <laughs> right front brake pads reset possible Perform reset, yes. Reset in progress. Yes, we know that's checked. Why does that come back on? It's just reset the front brake pads, that's good now. So if we turn the handbrake off, it still stays on. I reckon that's picking up off the uh, rear sensors. So I'll do them first. Uh, right, we're now at the back wheel. Take the back wheel off. My winter tyres. And as you can see, the back brake pads are worn right down on that. Nice even wear and luckily nothing scored on the disc. Nice smooth finish and minimal lip on there. So what I need to do is undo the nut at the back here, which I believe is 15mm. I think you've got... Uh, nut in there you can hold it with a pair of pliers or a ground down spanner and actually I think that one there is 15 mil and the back one is 13 mil so you can hold that one with a skinny spiral ground uh, spanner or ground down spanner and hopefully that one's going to spin off and I can just hold that with a pair of grips and same on the bottom so when that's off disconnect the electric handbrake mechanism and then there's a little trick you can do if you haven't got a computer which you can take the caliper apart and you can wind it in with two torx bits which I'll show you when I got the caliper off right managed to get a normal spanner on there uh, so it's 15 mil on the like, retaining nut there and then it's 13 mil at the back and so I just slid that on there, press it on the caliper, and just give that a few taps with the hammer. Brakes free quite quite good, like you know, just I just use a dead blow hammer, but any hammer will do, and just tapped it and it just uh say so just come loose. So you can put a ratchet on there or just carry on doing it with a spanner and it will come loose. So 
I'll spin that off, I'll do the bottom one, and then I'll come back to you. Right, two 30 mil bolts come out. Remember, you need to put a bit of uh, Loctite back on there when you put it back in. And you've got a electric connection there, which is for the, I gather, for the electric e-brake. So when you want to take that off, just press the back of it back. And that will uh, release the latch. And then just press that back and just wiggle it and it just pulls straight off. And then we've got the pads here. What's left of them? And worn right down. They were pretty low last time I looked at them. Obviously, they like a bit of rear braking on the BMWs. Let's see if I can tap that off. Come on, I think we're out of the way. Let's take this rear one off. So you can see this one also worn right down. My bad, really. Don't go that far. But I say it hasn't worn down the disc, but very close. So hopefully, the pads I've got, which we'll check in a minute, is exactly the same. And what we'll do is uh, as you can see the piston there is electric obviously you need to have a computer to wind it back in but what I intend to do what I've seen done if you undo them torque screws one there there's another one under the back oh just down that bracket and we take them off we can take the electric motor off the back and then we can wind it back in manually <coughs> with a torx bit. But I'll take that off and I'll come back to you and I'll give the sizes of that. Right, using a T30 in the impact, I spun the, uh, the bracket off with the two bolts in. Again, a little bit of blue uh, Loctite on there. And then, got a rubber O-ring on there. And you just give that a little twist and that'll just pull off the O-ring. And you've got a spline on there. And you've got a spline in there as well. So that should just lock in. So, you should, according to the other... Other bits, you should be able to spin that back in over that side I think they do it through there so uh, we'll get a spline tool for that <coughs> we'll put it in there we'll put that in the drill and we'll see if that winds it back in right I used a Torx bit you could use a spline but I used a T45 Torx bit which fitted in the back of there and then I turned it it's not that hard to turn but I wound it all the way in clockwise and then once it's wound in then you need a uh, piston compressor or a pair of water pump pliers or I managed to do it just by levering it and I managed to squeeze it in with my hand as well it's quite stiff but just keep constant pressure on it it feels like it's solid like it's hydro hydro locking but it's not just keep squeezing on it keep pressure on it evenly and it will slowly go back in I guess what you're doing is you're forcing the fluid back through the master cylinder. But when you've got it like that, that will go in now. And uh, I'm just going to wait. They're giving me the wrong pads. So wait for the right pads to come along, not them ones. Mine are like more triangular, as I showed you. So when the right one gets dropped off, should be any time now. I'll get them back in. I'll put them in the slots. I'll put a bit of grease in there, clean them up. And then I'll reassemble the plastic handbrake mechanism screw that back on and then screw the caliper back on and lube it as well and clean it up as go along well I'll come back to you in a bit right in this set the comes with two new uh, retaining bolts for the caliper and actually come with Loctite on there 
which is good so I don't know if I can find one at the moment but I've got the brake pads changed over now and they're the correct ones if you notice that one of them is slightly different than the other one you see that tall back bit that's for the sensor so I didn't check which way it comes off but normally the sensor goes on the piston side because obviously that should wear out first because that's doing the pushing so that goes on the outside there and the other one goes on the inside next to where the handbrake is and where the piston's pushing on it so I don't think they're any different they'll probably fit either way but probably with the cable and that's why I've done it anyway so it's just common sense to do it that way but yeah so they've changed I put them in as I say use the T45 you wind it fully in clockwise and then it'll stop and then you have to physically squeeze the piston in like you would do conventional type caliper and then that goes fully in insert the pads into the holder and I put a bit of uh, copper grease either end on the sliders and to say make sure these sliders they move in easy in and out and there's no splits in there otherwise that of course uneven brake wear and also binding as well so that's all back together plugs back in there it's connected back up for the handbrake uh, hopefully we can pump it up with a foot pedal and then it should just keep winding up until it gets tension on the handbrake so I've got the other side to do now that's the one with the uh, sensor on there so I'll take a picture of that one so three down one to go and there's the fourth one done the second back and the uh, yeah they do it uh, opposite so on the front it was the passenger side in England which was the curb side left hand side and on the back it was opposite diagonal which was the driver side so it was the offside rear so managed to get the uh, sensor out without breaking it hopefully put it back in there and run the uh, piston back in is that the same method the other side and just got to put the wheel back on now and as you can see it's pissing down so i bid you farewell and hope you can help someone doing the brakes on a 5 series f10 bmw light off so i would recommend it if you're changing the pads to uh change that sensor anyway i'll buy new ones so i hope you enjoyed the video uh, please like and subscribe if you haven't already and hope to see a new video soon coming out